Yo, yo, can you hear me? Yeah. Welcome everybody. Welcome to the live stream tonight. Hope everyone is going well. Kiwi Lawny, that is meant to be me in the picture. It ain't me. I'm not that muscly. Welcome everybody. J Earl Y two times in one day. The first time today was just a little um a little test because I haven't live streamed in so long and all the streaming software has slightly changed as it does. A striking resemblance. Res I can't even pronounce that. Resemblance. Yeah, a little bit. Yo yo Shane, what is happening, mate? Welcome guys. Welcome is it Steve or Stevel? Stevel? Uh, guns are too big, yeah, bro. Way too big. I've got no guns. Lack of guns. <laughs> Something smells like updog. You know it, Kelly. Thank you for being a far out, man. You've been a member for 27 months. What a legend. Chris from South Africa. What is happening, mate? Welcome into the live stream. Appreciate ya. You absolute legend. Really do appreciate it. Well, how's everyone going tonight? Today we're going to talk about some grass, winter time, but we can still get excited about it getting... We've had some sunny days over the last little bit. Where's everyone from? Everyone let me know where you're from in the comments, in the live stream here. I'd love to know where people are from. We're just going to have some fun tonight. We're just going to have some fun. G'day from WA. Yo, Scott, what is happening, man? Yo, Daniel's lawn care. Spring is almost here in Queensland. Bro, you've got spring in winter. It's like spring there, man. Don't even. Don't even, mate. Melbourne. Matt Birdo, what's up, my man? Hope you're going well. Wagga, nice. Not too far. Kayama from Young. Nice. Got some regional guys here. I love it. Manchester, UK. Woo. Indented heads. I've never heard of that place before. Sounds like you're joking. <laughs> Tweet heads. Oi. Australian Lord and Garden Podcast. Let me know when you want some memes. Mate, I'm always up for memes. Love a good laugh as long as they're not filthy. <laughs> if you know what I'm saying. Luke. G'day Sam, how you going? Dale from the Gold Coast. Welcome. We've got Adelaide here from Jay. Brizzy. York Peninsula, Penrith, brah, I'm Penrith lad, welcome from Tassie, nice, what's that, what's that, can't even pronounce that, we've got Avalon, and we've got, oh, 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 <laughs> okay, I'm going to stop, and embarrass myself, cheers, early for Airbnb info, can't wait to book a trip, nice man, it'd be cool to see you. Loving the Rover 45, mate. Same. It's actually away at the moment, getting a sharpen from Liam at Sydney Cylinder Mowers. So I'm keen to get that bad boy back. I want to use on the kayak soon and possibly on the ryegrass on the surrounds of the green as well. Oh, Hawaii. Nice. How good. How good is that? All right. Anyone got any topics we want to talk about tonight? I've got a few little ideas in the background. Like a little game I want to play, a little grass one. As well here on the stream, just to have some fun. Um, if you guys have any questions, let's start off tonight with some questions. And then we'll roll on to some other things I've got planned um, in the video soon. How's the kayak going? The kayak is going good. I actually shot a video on it today. It's the first time I've done it in, I reckon, over six months. Yeah, it's looking good. Here, here's, a little video. here's a little video of it. See that? That's just me mowing it today. Come on, brother. Focus. Nah, it's not going to focus for you. We'll try one, one more time. One more time. Hm. Here we go. It's nice and green. <laughs> you can't see it. No, we tried. We tried. If you go on my Instagram story, you'll see. I put a story up today. And my Facebook as well. I really want to come down to Airbnb, mate. You're welcome to come down here. 100%. From Perth. What's your handicap? Got this as a question today. It is a nearly a 14 not great it's going up and up and up at the moment not that i've played much golf but hey don't really have an excuse i've got a golf green in my backyard um i'm planning a big reno on the first of september that is awesome mate you had a question before that i'm pretty sure 
I got some diechem M for carpet grass and sprayed it just over a month ago. Looking pretty dead, but still kicking. Is it worth another spray? Yes, 100%, man. Give it a follow-up spray. Sorry. 100% give that a follow-up spray. Now's the time of year to do it. I actually applied some herbicide on the kaiku out the front there, some bow and arrow, so just to knock some winter weeds that have popped up recently. So now is the time. Silverstone Gardening, tell me how many balls you've lost in the dam. Personally, zip. Actually, one little in there, but when the dam level went down, I did grab it later, so I haven't lost any. I've hit one in there. <laughs> um, what else we got going on? How are you dealing with the amount of rain we've had in the southern New South Wales in the last weeks? Um, I just haven't been able to do much, man. I haven't had any problems with disease because I've been putting my fungicide program out on the bent grass. So it's not really been a problem. I just haven't been able to do a lot and just mowing. I'm basically mowing when I get the chance to here and there and cleaning off the duck poops as well. What's the maximum temperature ryegrass can handle? Uh, I wouldn't go anything above 32 degrees in the summertime for more than like two weeks. Otherwise, it starts getting uber stressed. Um, if you're getting up 35, 36, 37, bro, I wouldn't even consider it unless you've got really good water and bore and you can keep water up to it pretty regularly. Um, I've just built a golf cream with some sand and our plugs and waiting for the runners to spread. It's all filled in now, but just wondering what's the best way to completely flatten it. So I'd keep the regular top dressing, mate. If you can, weekly top dressing in the growing season. Even just dustings where you're putting out like 2 to 3 mil in thickness of sand. Um, I just will like utilize that growing season when it's going absolutely nuts. I'm gonna be doing the same thing on the um on the bent as well in the springtime. I think Schnitty's having a wolf. Why is he wolfing someone? Hold up, give me ten seconds. Just checking why Schnitty's wolfing. <laughs> I mean, I'll just turn the Wii music up. Enjoy. Sorry, someone's just turned up my house. <laughs> anyway, it's all good. So, let's get back to the questions. How do you get into lawn care as a job? I mean, man, you could start a business. You could... Um, what else could you do? You could... You could get into green camping if you want to, mate. There's many ways to get into it. You could just start doing, like, you know, start a business doing lawn mowing, as I said. Yeah, there's lots of ways to do it. I was trying to so hard to remember what that music was. <laughs> yeah, it's the Wii theme song. <laughs> oh, one of my faves. Zach, I love the commitment, man. 5 a.m., brother. Legend. When do you think the golf course on your property... Oh, sorry. When do you think you... When do you think you finish the golf course on your property? It will look incredible when it's complete. Uh, I think it pretty be complete, complete. I'm hoping most of it will be done by autumn this year. Um, but I'm not, yeah, not 100% sure if it'll be done by then. We'll see. We'll see how things pan out, depending on the weather. Um, I've killed off my perennial ryegrass due to the number of weeds. I wanted to start over and avoid weeds this time. What can I do to avoid weeds overtaking the Lord? Excuse me. Um, well, what I would do is at the moment, just if, if anything comes up, spray it with some glyphosate. In the springtime, give it a couple of waters um, to try and get some weeds to actually germinate and continue to spray them out. I'd do that over a month to six weeks. And then once you've cleaned out most of the weeds, then I'd probably look at putting the ryegrass down. Generally, the best time of year to put down ryegrass seed is autumn time because you get the best results. But you can do it in spring, but there's always just going to be more weed pressure, if that makes sense. So, personally, I would go autumn. Yeah, but probably not this time of year. Alright. Cool. What else we got here? <laughs> Tiff stuff is the best stuff ever. Hardly touch it and it shines. Yeah, it doesn't need much fertilizer inputs. Which is good. Just ticks along. 
How do you think your green will go this summer? Heat. What are your plans to protect it? Any signs of winter grass weeds yet? So it will go fine. I used to work on bent grass golf greens on the golf course in town, and it will be fine. You do have to baby it along a bit in the summertime. You may have to give it a water like a couple of mornings in a row during the week. Sometimes if you get a really big heat wave every single morning and then hand watering in the afternoons if you're getting some dry spots. Um, but you definitely can do it. What I'm probably going to use to combat that though is a wetting agent. So make sure I'm getting my wetting agent out regularly so the soil doesn't get hydrophobic and water runs off the top. Um, and it's also going to retain some moisture in there as well. And probably stick to a liquid fertilizer program with lower nitrogen inputs through the summer months as well just so we're not pushing so much growth and stressing it out through those periods. Um, I don't need to worry too much about fungus here in orange during the summertime, only because we don't get much humidity. It's quite a dry, um, a dry sort of a heat we get here in orange. So generally you only see disease pressure in winter this time of year, which you see a bit of fusarium, winter fusarium, which is snow mold in the States. And then when you're looking at springtime, we're mostly seeing dollar spot, um, and that's, that's really about it. You might get a little bit of pythium if you start overwatering, but not too much in orange because of our lack of humidity, which is a good thing for disease prevention. Quite different to even Sydney. Like, we are very, very different. A lot more humid in Sydney even compared to our region out this way. Um, will a large amount of rain wash away pre-emergent? It can if you're getting really, really heavy rain. Um, but if you've put down your pre-emergent and you've watered in and you haven't had heavy rain for a little while, you're probably going to be fine, man. It's only really if you do it after you've applied, um, you're going to have a bit of a problem, but it will bond to the to the actual soil itself. So I wouldn't be too stressed about it unless you're getting hundreds and hundreds of mil of rain very quickly. Ben Foley, I'm only 14 and love lawn care. Love it, man. So good. And I... Love real mowing. I love real mowing. Love your vids, and I'm learning a lot. Awesome, man. I appreciate that. Glad you're enjoying the videos. Do you understand much about cricket pitches? I will be honest, not really. I don't have a lot of experience with cricket pitches. Um, I honestly don't. I really don't know much at all. I know a bit about the clay and stuff, but I don't have much experience. Got experience with bowling greens and golf greens. Um, and obviously a whole golf course like fairways, tees, rough, all that kind of thing. Um, but not really much experience with cricket wickets. I would, I'd love to learn more. Hi again, Ben. Are you having a tournament on the golf course in the near future? I'm planning to. So I'm planning to do a tournament probably more in autumn time, not in spring, um, more towards when the, the tees and the fairways are finished. And thinking about making that like a, a paid event with only a limited amount of tickets. Um, which will do some catering and stuff and a couple of different things. So, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to doing that. Just got to figure out some logistics for that. But I think that would be really, really cool come springtime. Once the carpet grass is all fried, will a good scarifier get rid of the dead stuff? Correct me in 100%. I'd go that way. I'll rake it out, whatever you can do. But, yeah, that would be the best way to pull it out. But make sure it's dead um, when you do do it, just so you get it out nice and cleanly as well. I reckon that would be the go. Alright, I had this question this morning. What type of zoys are you going on the fairway? Where did I see it? It was here a second ago. Um, Empire zoys, yeah, I'm pretty sure. Or Sir Grange. Ha! Whoops. <laughs> Sir Grange. I'm looking for Sir Grange. That's what we're going to be putting there from the guys at Lawn Solutions. Um, Alright. I us turn this Wii music down, because it's starting to irritate me. Alright, let's play a game. Let's play a game. So I downloaded this game today on Steam. Let's get Steam up. Let's just give it a go, man. Let's give it a crack. Here's Steam just here. So, this is a free game that I found on the internet. Let's up Josh Sims. Um... So this is just called Grass Cutter. Let's just give it a go, man. I have no idea what it's about. But we're just going to try it. Just for the fun of it, actually. Just for all that's doing that. Yeah, we're good. We're good, we're good. 
Can you guys see it? Beautiful. Alright. So, let's just try this out. I did try the first level, so I do kind of know what this is about. You know, but let's just make some grass. See if we can get some record times. Wow, that cat was loud, brother. Eight seconds, man. Beat that. This game is just stupid. Alright, what's the tactic here? Oh, I honestly should not have done this because you guys are going to think I'm not great. Yeah, they already failed. It's not good. No. Oh, no. Bruz. I wonder if I lose points for doing that. We about to find out. Ah, no, nah, we're good, man. Have you ever played 2K PGA? I made your green and surrounds in the game. Did you really? Could you send me a link to that? <laughs> I've got the game. Is it 2K, is it the latest one? Or the 2K, the 2019 one? I mean, I could have downloaded that and played that. Maybe I'll download it now. Actually, no, I won't, because it'll slow down my stream. Um... Man, you need to send me a link to that or show me how to get it because I'm 100% going to try that and I'll tell you how close it is to actually what it's like. That's so cool. That's awesome, man. Crunchy. I'm building a home at the moment, getting ready to move in as they're going to be installing Wintergreen in the next month. Any tips? Um, Just make sure you've got your soil prep done really well, mate. Get rid of your all the weeds you can in there as well. So spray anything out that's in there currently. If I was you, I'd make sure you got 100 mil of some nice topsoil or some turf underlay or something to put underneath the uh, do, 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 underneath the underneath the turf when you get to do it. That's what I recommend you do. Just so you got giving it its best chance um, to shoot its roots down and get really nicely established as well. I mean, you don't you don't have to do it. Um, at Josh's house, my brother, we didn't do that, and it was fine. It was cooch, though, so cooch tends to kick along nicely without too much um, turf underlay. But, yeah, that's the best thing to do. Just make sure you get your soil prep right. Get the, it nice and level. Get any rocks out if you can, and you're going to be sweet. Um, what will you be doing to control the thatch in the future? Have you got machinery lined up? So I have got a scarifier I've already got here. I'm just going to use a walk-behind scarifier. Um when it comes to fairways, we'll figure it out. I might get some heads for the for the John Deere. I'm not really sure there. We'll, once we get to that point, we'll um come on, don't hit anything. We'll figure it out. Um, oh wow, but yeah, we'll figure it out when the time comes. Um, but at the moment, just for the green, I'll be using a walk behind. That's gonna be the go. Here we go. Look at three stars. Got red thread come back in my ryegrass. Is there any way to keep it away apart from nitrogen and fungicides? Um, how thatch is your lawn, man? You may need to give it a slight dethatch. It may be getting just a little bit too too matty in there. So you might be you got. I'm assuming your grass is probably pretty thick. So you may need to just thin it out a bit with either scarify or just a scarifying rake, like a hand one. Good day, Jacob. Hope you're going well. Welcome from Kiwiland. Appreciate you tuning in, mate. We're not doing much exciting stuff at the moment. Oh, no, brother. What are you doing? Bro, where's that duck? I'm going to get him. Oh. <laughs> not worth it. <laughs> um, how, long you, how long would you wait before doing a topsoil on the new turf? I mean, you could honestly top dress it the day after you lay it, as long as you're not covering the leaf too much. Like, you can do it. The day of. That is honestly not a problem. As long as you're not smothering it, you'll be sweet. Daniel Reynolds expecting a drought this year. Yeah, I've heard we're looking at going back into El Nino, which is not cool. Um, apart from wedding agents, what else can you do to keep the lawn healthy in dry, hot summer weather? So, um, yeah, there's a couple of different things you can do. Obviously, watering properly is going to be a really good way to do it. So, doing infrequent deeper waters so making sure you're not watering every single day so training your lawn to actually shoot its roots a lot lower so i'd recommend doing it two to three times a week 
with 13 mil of irrigation each time that you water. Now, it's going to be different if you're on a sandy profile and if as opposed to when you're on a clay profile. So that's sort of a rule of thumb for in the middle. If you've got sand, you might actually have to do slightly more frequent waters with a little bit less water because it is going to drop through a little bit quicker. Um, and then when it comes to clay, you can do a little bit less water and stretch it out longer as well because it's going to hold that water in there on top of that. So make sure you water properly. Probably make sure you don't stress the lawn out when you mow. So don't... Um, Always make sure your mower blades are sharp. Mow often. Um, don't mow your lawn when it's stressed though, when it looks like it's starting to turn, because you will do more damage to it on top of that. And then the only other thing I would say is, have a look at using plant growth regulators, because it will stop it growing quite a bit, which can help with your water um, efficiency as well. And yeah, apart from that, that's really all the tips I've got in that. Kevin Booth, do you miss me? No, mate. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I do. What other grass seeds can you mix with ryegrass? Man, you could, there's heaps of grass seeds you could mix with it. Kentucky bluegrass goes really, really well with ryegrass. Um, fescues can look nice. I'd probably go more towards fine fescues than tall fescue because tall fescue has quite a thick leaf blade, unless you like the look of that. Um, otherwise... Yeah, I'd probably just go a fine fescue or some Kentucky bluegrass. That would be my my recommendation, my guy. Building a house in Victoria and watching all your irrigation videos and lawn care has been awesome. Love it, mate. Can't wait to get into my new, my new lawn down. Keep the vids coming. Appreciate it, mate. Glad you're enjoying the videos as well. Right, let's avoid the ducks this time, even though I really want to get them. So I mentioned in today's live stream a little bit earlier today... Um, <clears throat> that the ducks have not really been going too crazy on the um the green. Now, I'm not sure if that's because of the top dress I did the other day, which generally when you top dress or do renos, they tend to go more nuts on um on bent grass greens. So I don't know if it's that. I haven't been putting much nitrogen down there. So I'm going to put some down tomorrow and see if they come back. Um, and if they don't, sweet if they do. Dang it. But we'll find out. But it's been good. I haven't been having to clean up poo like every day which is nice so I take that back <laughs> Schnitty's been doing some poops he hasn't been too well unfortunately poor little guy I think he ate some duck poo and it hasn't gone too well in his belly he's a bit better today though he's fine but he's just you know dropping him just can't escape the poo man Am I allowed to go near the sprinklers? This one's actually tricky. Oh, brother. Mason, it is going well, mate. How are you going? Coming to Queensland anytime soon. Um, I'm coming to Queensland. I feel like I'm going to the Gold Coast soon for some reason. Um, oh, brah. Alright. Let's see how we go. Let me just concentrate for a second, then I'll answer your question. <laughs> yes. Nope. Nope. Oh dang it, that was on that was silly. Oh, what a waste of time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's the Kool-Aid. <laughs> hey, still got three stars. I don't know how that works. That was sloppy as. Um, alright. Ryegrass and creeping red fisk is a sweet mix. Yep. Yep, I do agree, old Kevin. Alright, what else we got here? Um... I ever sowed my grass tennis courts with bent in winter. All the ducks have moved in and poop everywhere. Bro, that's relatable. What is it with bent and ducks? Man, they must just love the taste of it. I don't know. We used to have a, a green, uh, the eighth green when I was working on the golf course, that used to have the same problem. They always used to just turd there like crazy. It was the one that was near the dam. They just used to love it. 
If you're coming to the Gold Coast, come fix my lawn. It would be great content for the channel. That's what everyone says, bro. <laughs> and it would make you feel heaps good inside your heart. Oh, you're not wrong, mate. It's great advice. <laughs> I once showed you a pic of my lawn looking mint, but I had a few dead spots. You spotted a magpie in the distance and said it was army worms. You were right. Hey, there you go. It's nice to be right about something every now and then. I, I can't remember that, but how long ago was that? Right, this is going to be the last try, and then we're going to do something else. Oh, next time I die, that's when we get off, right? See how long we can go. Let's see how many levels. What's going on here? What do I got to do? Oh, ha, look at that. What, what else we got to do, though? What, what have I got to do? Hmm. Maybe I was supposed to... Oh, the... We haven't died yet, boys. We got this. Alright, oh. we're getting off this now. We're done. Not bad, not bad. Fun little game. Jeez, mate. Appreciate the good luck. <laughs> Alright. Drive out from the new openings. A bit late, mate. Come on. Could have told me that earlier. Straight into the drink. Yep, we're done. What are your plans around the pond? So, I'm trying to decide. I did ask you guys on YouTube a while back, and we talked about possibly putting ryegrass around it, or zoysia. I think the everyone sort of lent towards putting zoysia around the dam, which I thought would be awesome. Some other guys said put some plants or ornamentals around there. Uh, I'm not super keen on doing that, I don't think. I'd rather just get grass up there and make it look nice and tidy. I wouldn't mind getting one of those... Um, they're not called hobber mowers. What are they? Fly mows. One of the fly mows and using it around the edge of the dam just for the fun of it. I'd just love to give it a go. So that's my thought process is probably going towards using um, a fly mow and using grass there as well. G'day, Brandon. Hope you're going well. Um, what's Scott? What are we saying? With home greens, do you have any tips for getting an even coverage for a light top just without specialist equipment? They even seem to get it even using the spade flick when going light. Um, I would have recommended the spade flick, but you said you struggle with that. Um, you could use, do you have a fertilizer spreader? Like a broadcast spreader? That would probably be the next best thing. So you can put, make sure your sand is really, really dry and put it into your spreader, like your fertilizer spreader. Um, and that's probably going to be the best way to do it without using specialist equipment. There is some guys that actually dust golf greens with like walk behind fertilizer spreaders so you can definitely do it definitely can do it um everyone's telling me to go through come on guys could have said it quicker <laughs> this game is triggering me the mower cuts somehow wider than the actual machine is <laughs> i didn't even notice that plus the color on the grass of the game is nicer before you mow it To be honest, as much as I'd love a perfect lawn, the battle to get there is after fun. That's it, man. 100%. So good. Like, that's exactly it. The journey is the fun part, I think. And, like, fixing something from being disgraceful to looking really nice is honestly the most fun part of it all. Um, Justin. What are we saying? I missed it. Those lawn planners on your site, what exactly is it? So they are, they're basically going to tell you when to do renovations on your lawn, um, when to apply a product like your granular fertilizers and your liquid fertilizers as well, and how many times per year you do it, when you put it in pre-emergence, insecticides. It's basically like a lawn calendar and schedule that tells you when to apply things and when to do turf practices as well. Um, and now I've actually introduced... Um, a monthly email that's paired alongside the lawn plans as well. So if you sign up for a lawn plan or you've previously signed up for a lawn plan, like purchased one in the last couple of years, I'm also putting out extra tips monthly, um, which starts on the 1st of August. Just so you guys get a little bit of extra help that relates to the season we're in, and that will change. So I'll have some for the next 
growing season and then the growing season after that i'll set out a new set of them as well depending on the season so say if we're going to season of drought one year obviously those emails will be um tailored towards that season not just having the same email coming out every year so it's just something i'm working on the back end over winter um just to give you guys some more tips along the way if you purchase one of those plans um when will i start the bunker I probably won't start the bunker until I've finished most of everything else, to be honest with you. I'm just still trying to figure out designs and exactly how I want to go about doing it. Yo, Grant, what has happened, man? How is the kayak going this winter? So I spoke about it at the start of the video. I actually shot a video today, um, which I've half filmed. I'll finish filming it on Friday because I want to show the results of putting out some products and some weed killer and stuff as well. So I did like a little bit of a weed and feed mix with some bow and arrow and some enhance, like some liquid iron, just to knock down the weeds and to also push some color in the kai as well. Easy flow systems, are they as good as they look for the time? Poor lawn addicts. Man, I loved mine. Um, I just wouldn't recommend putting liquid ferts in there, like liquid irons, just because you can get it spraying onto your footpath all the time. But if you're gonna put kelp in there, wetting agent, so good. I used to run that in my old house in town and it was really, really good. I loved it. It was great. Does the drainage from your green run into your dam? Yeah, it does. Um, and yeah, I sort of do have to be a little bit careful with algae. So I'm looking at getting... There's a couple of different options. I'm either thinking about getting a fountain in there. Um, or pumping the water out um, up to where I'm going to create like a little rock drain. Like a little, like a little creek from one side of the fairway to the dam um which i'll pump the water out run it through the rocks which will then run back into the dam so it'll create that bit of air flowing and stop those issues with that as well going to get some fish in there as well <coughs> yeah that's that's sort of my plan but yeah you do have to a little bit careful but yeah there's a little the algae slowed down now there was a little bit of algae in there towards the end of the season when i was watering quite a bit and the water was flushing through all the time and i was fertilizing all the time as well but now it's sort of cleared up how's josh's tiff tough coming along it is winter so it's dormant at the moment but it looked good last time i saw it love your app starting using it this season awesome man appreciate it do you have any tips about cooch lawn um be more just what sort of tips man be a little bit more sp specific and i can help you out 100 percent that bit help Greg the Pond Guy, get him to come and build your feature. <laughs> I don't reckon that would be cheap. Is he from Australia or is he from overseas? You're going to get plenty of golf balls in there. Yeah, man, no doubt. I'll have to pay someone out and do a little deep dive. Have you got any advice how to get rid of moles? I have got no experience with moles. I did see something on Alan Haynes' channel where he had moles. Did he have moles? He had something like that on there. Um, and he somehow got rid of them. Not sure how. But yeah, go check out the lawn care nut. He had something on there. Is the app coming out for Android? No, the app... I don't think the app's going to come out for Android. So, Austin, the guy who designed the app, I was just sort of help give him some ideas for it. Um, he needs to find someone that would help build it on Android because he's an app builder and he does Apple apps. But to build something for Android is going to cost quite a bit of money. So, I don't think that's going to be happening in the near future, unfortunately. Uh, it's not my app, sorry, by the way. It's it's um Austin's app. I just sort of helped give him a few ideas for plant growth regulators and a couple other things. It's called Lawn Journal. I'll get it up on my phone. Just going to find it now. I haven't been using it because it's winter time. Lawn Journal. There you go. So it's called Lawn, sorry, Lawn Care Journal, not Lawn Journal. Right. Look, you know how Apple gets rid of stuff when you haven't used it for a while? Just happened to re-download it, sorry. Sorry, let's just... Alright, so this is the app here. Can you guys see that? 
on my home screen. Lawn journal is the one. So that's the app there. So you can measure your lawn size out. You can put plant growth regulator applications in there. Top dressing calculator, product cost calculator, um, and there's like even an MPK calculator as well. So there's lots of different options in there. Um, really handy just to set up notifications when you need to reapply something. A journal so you can look like back on what you have applied in the last couple of months if you forgot when you applied it. So super handy. I mean. Yeah, it's good to keep track of what you've done because if you forget, you can start over applying products and you can have issues in the long run. So really good to keep on top of it and understand how things run. Um, there's guys in Australia who can do it for you, same company. Is that for the pond, pond guys, is it? There you go. Um, if it was a, a subscription for you to maintain my lawn, shut up and take my money. <laughs> Imagine, I don't think I'd be able to do that much. Would you consider building a bowling green in case golf ever gets boring, bruh? Pro to be honest, probably not. Um, oh, yeah, it's not really my favourite bit of maintenance, bowling greens. I mean, I did enjoy it when I was doing my apprenticeship, but I just love the golf so much more. Um, and I do enjoy playing golf a little bit more as well. Bowls wasn't just really my cup of tea. Um, it's really cool though to get that hybrid cooch super super low. So we used to measure in like like 10 cent pieces, 20 cent pieces, 5 cent pieces like for your height of cut. So you'd actually have your height of cut, um, the thickness of like during tournaments and stuff of like a 5 cent piece. So the funny thing was like people would have a 5 cent piece and keep that 5 cent piece forever because every 5 cent piece is slightly different in size, if that makes sense. So like someone... On the other end of town, could have a five cent piece that was different to the bowling green we were working at. So, our five cents height of cut was always slightly different. And it's just funny the little things they used to do back in the day with the trade. Um, and all the mowers are electric as well. Now, the reason for that is because you're working near clubhouses, so it makes a lot of noise. Um, so, that's why they're generally all electric. And they're quite heavy mowers as well. Really, really cool though. Really, really cool mowers. Um, Man, I remember smacking in the side of the bowling green so many times with those bad boys just because he used to forget what side the start and the stop was on and you get confused with... Because he used to have like little electric buttons on them. You'd have a start and a stop on the right-hand side, I think, and the reel start and stop was on the left-hand side and sometimes you'd stop the reel instead of the roller and you'd just smack into the side of the... um. Maybe only happened once or twice, but not fun. Also, rolling the um the roller into the ditches was always great fun as well. All right, but yeah, I used to, I did used to enjoy it. It's definitely different. I mean, I didn't used to enjoy the Saturday mornings. We used to go and have to cut and roll, and then put out the mats and jacks for the bowlers. But I mean, that's that's what comes with green keeping as well. Is always your weekend work. Um, where are we up to? Do you do lawn care plans for camber grass? I have a site in the Southern Highlands which is struggling. Excuse me, sorry. Which is struggling going into the pH test next week. Happy to pay for a plan if you have one. So my lawn plans are a template. So then probably not going to give you much help with like pH tests um, and amending soil if you have problems in there. But always happy to help you out if you send me an email. I mean, flick me an email and I'm more than happy to help you out and give you some advice. What's your opinion on clover lawns? Now, not my cup of tea, but they do have their place. They definitely have their place. <laughs> Alright, what are we going to do next? I, did, I was looking on the internet earlier today, and I was trying to figure out some topics to talk about. Um, and I was looking at like some common lawn myths. So I thought it would be interesting just to have a quick chat or a quick look at some common lawn myths. Um, I just found an article on the internet from like somewhere in the states but we can make this relate to ourselves here so let's have a look and see what you guys think i'm actually going to tell you what the myth is first and see what you guys think if it's a myth or if it's legit All right so i'm going to ask the questions i want to see what your answers are let me just get our questions up here right. okay this is a myth is this myth or is it fact if you let turf grass your lawn seed heads grow in your lawn and then mow them off 
that seed will actually germinate and grow. What do you guys think? Let's do it. Let's do a little poll in here, actually. All right, you guys ready? I want to see what you think. Will seed head from your lawn germinate and grow into grass? Bam. All right, we've got a poll that's just popped up. Let me know what you guys think. What? Is, you should get a golf cart, bro. That would be lazy. <laughs> oh, it's cool seeing these results. Hold up, can I view it? Keep voting, guys. There's only 21 votes in there so far. I can see 75 people in here. On it. Yep, here we go. The vote's going up. Good stuff. Let's get a few more votes. Mythbuster. Yeah, brah. Should get the little theme music going. I had bought a cylinder mile for 4.5k. My wife lost her bananas and had to return it. Did you ask your wife before you went and bought it, bro? Sometimes it is good to... <laughs> it's, you can um, buy something else for forgiveness later, but four and a half grand? Bruz. <laughs> Maybe you should have chatted to her first. For power, yes, actually. You're not wrong, brother. All right, let's look. I'll tell you guys what the answer is, all right? You ready? So, let's end that poll. Let's tell you what the results were. So, the results were... What did we get? Where'd they go? Why can't I view the results? Well, that's just not cool. Anyway, it was like... Here we go. Will seed head from your lawn germinate and grow into grass? Yes was 52% and no was 47%. So... Here's the answer. You guys ready? Let me flick it up on the screen. All right, we look here. Seed heads need to mature on the stem for several months in order to germinate. So you're basically going to get a no there. So the seed heads produced in spring will not germinate when they are mowed or if they are moved as mulch into the garden. There you go. <clears throat> so no. Now, poa, which is winter grass, is a little bit of a different story. That tends to have a very high rate of germination when it um gets down in there. They produce millions of seed heads a day, and they a, a day. Wow, that's not right. A year. Um, the the plant does so. Yeah, that's one that does. But in general, like your ryegrass lawn, if you start seeing seed heads, I mean, you probably need to mow your grass because it's getting super long when it starts producing seed heads. And the same with like coots and stuff like that. It's not actually going to reproduce. You can't collect it. And then use it again to um, use for seed on your lawn. So another common question I always get is how do you get rid of seed heads? So generally it's going to come up when your lawn's stressed, which means you either haven't sharpened your mower blades, as I think it even says here. Most effective way to control turf grass seed heads is through frequently mowing with a sharp mower blade. Seed head production usually lasts about a month for cool season grasses and zoysia grass. So zoysia is a warm season grass. Bermuda, which is just what is cooch grass, they just call it Bermuda in the States, produces seed head throughout the summer. So you can't avoid it sometimes, like sometimes it's just going to produce that seed head, but if you get onto a regular pro program with plant growth regulators, you can sort of suppress that seed head a little bit as well. Um, right, let's hide this away. We're going to ask the next question in a minute, but I'm just going to see what you guys said here. Did you ask your wife first? <laughs> 52, yes. 57, no. 47, no. Yeah. Why would you tell your wife how much it costs? I don't tell my wife anything. Oh, brother. The truth is common. Here. The mail got delivered while I wasn't home. Oh, <laughs> bro. Amateur hour. You should have... <laughs> Dang it. Greetings from Germany. Welcome, man. You should get some of your friends and do a competition and who can do the furthest or closest to the hole. Yeah, I'm thinking of doing that, mate. I'm actually thinking, I don't know what you guys think of this, but I'm thinking of starting a second channel um, more for entertainment kind of stuff, so not lawn care stuff, So, which would be like challenges on the golf green um, with my mates, like maybe getting 100 golf balls and trying to get a hole in one on the green just because 
it's not lawn tips, you know what I mean? We're not going to be talking about grass in those videos. It's more going to be having fun, mucking around, trying different challenges as well. So I'm thinking of starting a channel this springtime. Um, so yeah, keep an eye out for that. Hopefully you guys will enjoy it. If you don't, don't subscribe. It's as easy as that. Tell you won it in a raffle. I think it's too late, Shane, for um for Justin to say that he won that Murrah in a raffle. After he told it was four and a half grand. <laughs> what mower was it? By the way. I'd love to know what mower it was, Justin. Let us know, bro. Alright, let's do another myth, hey? Let's find a good one. Let's find a controversial one. Let's have a look. <laughs> That's funny, that one. <laughs> Why have they put this in here? <laughs> Alright. Myth. I need a putting green in my backyard. Um, let's do a poll on that. What? That's not even a, that's not even a myth anyway. Anyway, let's just do a fun. Oh, I want to see what this person says. This is from a greenkeeper over in the states. All right, answer away. I'll just say lawn tips sent out. Yeah, man, just blame me. That's easy. But how? What mower did you get? We need to know, Justin. What are you guys answering? Oh, wait. I like the answers from you guys. That's good. You should buy a Hudson Star mower to test it out in the green for a video. I have heard about those. I've seen a few guys in the States using them. Um, they did actually reach out a little while ago and ask me if I wanted to distribute them in Australia. Um... I just, I actually got to write back to them. I f completely forgot about that. But I think it would be a little bit hard to import them with just the um, the exchange rate at the moment. It'd just be, it'd, it'd be very expensive. They would be so expensive. All right. We're about to end that poll. How many people have voted on it? I've had 35 votes. We'll get to 40. I see you other 90 people sitting in there. So we can get three, four more votes, and then we'll we'll end the poll. I mean, I don't think you're gonna be able to sway it now, anyway. Come on, another vote there would be great, man. Thirty-nine, forty. There we go. Right, we'll end it. Bang on forty. All right. So people said yes. That was the majority. Um, twenty seventy-two. Sorry to twenty-seven. Um, so see what this person said. This is interesting. All right. Miss. I need a putting green in my backyard. He says, let me advise you strongly against the idea, which I kind of agree. Now let's see what he says, why he says that. Maintaining a backyard putting green requires more fertilization, mowing, cultivation, and pesticide applications than a normal lawn. Main reason for that is because you, your cutting is so short, so you need to put a lot more inputs into it. You're putting so much more stress under the plant itself as well. So it's just a lot more work involved. And I... Th That'd probably be why this guy is recommending against this because you do need a bit of knowledge because you're going to run into a lot more problems um, and you're going to need to have a bit of time as well to spend out there doing it because it's as soon as you start cutting that low, you're going to have to mow more regularly, like when in the growing season, like daily. Um, it's going to be a lot. So he also says, additionally, it must be mown five or more times weekly. There you go. With a special greens type real mow. Now... Well, you guys know that. <clears throat> um, they require servicing from specialised shops. Luckily, it's a lot easier to do nowadays because it's become quite popular. Real mowers. A putting green is like a puppy. You have to go home and check on it at lunch. If you've got bent grass, 100%. If you've got cooch grass, Bermuda grass, you can get away with a little bit more. Not quite as stressful as bent grass in the summertime. When you leave for vacation, you'll have to find someone to look after it. Yep. Thanks, Josh Sims, for looking after it when I go away. And accidents do happen, so be prepared to do some cleanup when squirrels, <laughs> raccoons, and armadillos, <laughs> or the neighborhood dogs, or your nephews, 
<laughs> Where's this going? Where's this going? All your nephews want to know what it says. Dig up your investment. Ooh, if your nephews are doing that, bro. If you're still undeterred, see FSA 6143 Building a Backyard Putting Green for more information. I'm interested to see what that article is. Let's save that one for later on. Alright, cool. Let's see what you guys are saying. Should I cut my grass short or longer to help protect wear with the dogs? It's not really going to make much of a difference, to be honest, mate, depending on what height you're cutting on. Maybe a little bit longer, because you're not going to be stressing it out as much, but you won't see too much difference in there. Hey, mate, I met you at Lawn Solutions recently, Emerson. Yo, yo. Recently in Sydney, I've, I've got six to 800 square metres of turf that I'll be seeding with KaiQ. Um, what brand irrigation system do you recommend without breaking the bank? Um, they're all going to be pretty similar cost-wise, man, if you go on irrigation. Now, it just it becomes more or less expensive depending on what pipe size you get, what type of pipe you get. Um, and some heads will be a little bit more expensive, but they're all very similar price when it comes to branding. Everyone's got comparable things depending on what quality it's at. Um but, I mean, for home lawns, look at Hunter, Rainbird. They're probably going to be your main two ones when you're looking at home systems. Um, Toro does sell some stuff in the home market, but it's not quite as widely used as the other two, like your Rainbird and your Hunter. So I'd start with those ones. I'd probably get someone to design a plan for you, unless you you um have done a bit of research and you understand how to design it, depending on your water pressure and your water source and everything as well. Um, but yeah, I just, I'd recommend just doing it <clears throat> off your tap to start um, and then looking at making it automatic in the future with, with a wire to the to the valve, the solenoid valve, which will be down near your tap. Um, so start off with just like a manual irrigation system. They're still in ground and then, because it actually is quite expensive to get a controller and do the wiring and stuff. It's actually quite, like you can pay up 600, 700 bucks, 800 bucks for a, for a controller itself, depending on which one you get. Hunter all the way, there you go. I've got Rainbird, and I'm going to get some Rainbird stuff on my tees and stuff as well. So I've used Hunter and Rainbird. Both pretty similar, to be honest. Um, how does your Dax Hunt like the new green? Um, yep, yeah, he, he kind of doesn't really go on it much, because when I was seeding it, he... I used to tell him to get off there just because I didn't want him running ryegrass seed onto the bent grass. So he doesn't really go on there much anymore. He, he just tends to think he's not allowed on there unless I call him onto the green while I'm shooting a video. Um, but, yeah, he loves the area down there because he loves chasing the ducks. Only when I'm there, though. If he walks outside, he won't go down there unless I'm down there. Um, his name's Schnitty as well, like, like Schnitzel, but shortened to Schnitty. Yeah. <laughs> I try to get Schnitty in there as much as I can, but sometimes he's just off sniffing something in the distance. Um, the Bolse. If you could have one machine, Bobcat, Excavator, etc. for your property, what would you choose? Mower doesn't count. I'd probably go a Skiddy, man. I'd probably go a Skid Steer. Um, oh, that's hard, though. Would I? I don't know. That's a very hard question. Yeah, I don't know. That's a hard question, man. I'd probably go a skiddy. I'd probably go. I'll probably go a skid steer and just hire out an excavator when I can. <laughs> Is that a good answer? <laughs> Mason, front lawn's going good, man. Got a video coming on Saturday, actually. Keep an eye out for that. What's the hardest part about keeping a bent grass green? Um, I'd say the hardest part is probably. Just making sure you're on top of all your maintenance. So you're mowing your applications of fungicides, making sure you're on a proper fungicide program. Um, and then uh, the hardest, hardest part is going to be the summer because bent grass can turn so quickly when we get some heat. So you could water your bent grass in the morning on like a 32, 33 degree, degree day. And then by the afternoon, you'll start getting blue spots like localized dry spot. On your green, you have to go out and hand water them again. So, yeah, that is probably the hardest thing is making sure that it doesn't dry out 
um, because it it just happens super easily if you're getting really, really warm weather. Um, Let's do another myth. Let's do another one. There's some weird ones on here that are just aren't relatable. It's more for like the estates. Um. <laughs> is there any more good ones on here? Oh, this is an interesting one. I actually don't have... This is a good one. Because I don't know much about this one either. Alright, I'll type it in here. Myth. You ready? You two guys tell me what you think. Once I've typed it out. I should just copy paste today. Eh? Spell that right, yep. Alright, you ready? So the myth is returning mulched leaves can be detrimental to turf grass quality. What do you guys think? Let me know. Ooh, 50-50 so far. Interesting. Have you come across any snakes around your dam? Um, not around the dam. I've actually seen one big whopper of a brown. I've seen two, actually. Brown snakes up near the house. Saw a massive one last season. It was actually, there's a hole near the house um, where it sleeps. Um, and I think it's actually, might possibly still be under there. I'm not really sure. Because um, I put some rocks in front of the hole and the rocks were removed today. So I was like, when I was out there mowing. So I, either that was one of the kids or it was the snake. I'm not sure. Sna the snake shouldn't really be out this time of year because it's way too cold here in Orange. So it was probably the kids. I should ask the kids if it was them that moved the rocks. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, it, it was like, it's actually under my office, the spot where the hole is in the bottom of the house. So hopefully I did put the torch in there and had a look around. I couldn't see it there today, but yeah, there is snakes about. Luckily, because I'm um, not many though, because we have got some cattle in the paddock now, which is keeping some traffic going in there. Um, and I use machinery a lot on the property as well, so it's a lot of noise. Love a good snake story, I don't, bro. Snakes are freaky. Blech. Shane, you can't do that to snakes. I learned that the hard way. <laughs> it's actually illegal, I found. If you kill snakes, you can actually get a huge fine. Um, once you... I think you get a jail, too. From memory. Um... Once your course is all set up, will your wife have to make appointments to see you? <laughs> Who knows? Bray will find out. Is your wife invested in your obsession to lawn care? I appreciate this is your this is your job. Um Emma, if you're watching you invested. I wouldn't say she loves grass, but she supports me in everything I do, if that answers your question. What's in a lawn plan and what time of year should I get one? You could get a lawn plan any time of year, mate. doesn't really matter what you get it. Um, the lawn plans, as I said, have fertilizer recommendations, like product recommendations for the year, when to do your lawn renovations, when to put out insecticides, um, and also when to put out your pre-emergence. Very important to get your timing right on those. And I've also got a monthly email that goes out just for guys that have purchased the lawn plans as well. So that's... I've already set up, I've already written out four for this season and I will adjust adjust the next couple depending on how the season pans out. So if we're getting a dry season, I'll adjust it and give you guys some advice on how to look after your lawn in the dry season or if we're getting lots of rain, same thing as well. So I haven't gone all the way through the season because I want to adjust it just depending on how things look. Brendan, the magpies are dominating my lawn. The size of the worms they're taking out is insane. Really? And leaving so many holes. Have you tried any Kool-Aid? Supposedly magpies don't like the smell of Kool-Aid. <laughs> um, apart from that, I don't really have much advice. Sorry, mate. Everyone tells me to get a bigger dog, but... You know. Don't know. All right, let's get back to our myth. About... So the myth, again, was... If anyone wants to vote, get your vote in now. I've got 40 votes sitting there. 
The myth was returning mulch leaves can be detrimental to turf grass quality. What do you guys think? Let's see what you guys think. Let's end the poll. We had 40 people vote. Boom. We're ending it now. So we had, it's pretty close this one. So we had, yes, 53%. So 53% of you guys think that it's going to be detrimental to your turf. 46% said no. So let's read this article and have a look, eh? So we've got here. So heavy layers of tree leaves shading the grass can smother and kill it. So that's if you leave it on there. It can smother it and kill it. Um, otherwise, however, research shows that moderate levels of tree leaves can be mulched without any detrimental effects to the soil or turf and usually result in improvement in soil structure. Ooh, positive. The easiest way to dispose the leaves is simply to mow them up into your turf. So you mulch, mow them back into there. Regular mowing during the fall or autumn, we're Australians. Oh, not all of us. We'll chop the leaves into small pieces and let them filter into the turf. Mulching leaves with a mower is much easier than raking, blowing or vacuuming the leaves. Like some have done in the past. Yes, it's definitely easier to mulch them. It may still be necessary if copious, copious amounts of leaves accumulate between mowings. Yeah. So mulch them back in, guys, because you're going to start building up some organics in your soil. If you know guys that use a lot of leaves as mulch in garden beds and compost, because it really helps get that nice, black, rich soil. So definitely, if you can, mulch those leaves back in there, because you're going to start building up a really, really nice, healthy soil. All right. I'm going to get this off here. We're going to search for another one. We'll do one, one more myth. <clears throat> Let's be find really, really good ones. That's an interesting one. <laughs> oh, here we go. This is a classic. I love this one. All right. Let's put this one in here. Hmm. You. This is a clanger. This is a banger. Alright. Questions up there. Answer away, guys. I want to see what you say. This is this is one that people tend to get quite intense about, and I get questions about this all the time. So this is a great one. I'm glad this one came up in here actually. Yeah, Paul, my man. High five, bro. Yeah, it depends on the tree, yeah. But pine needles quite aren't, quite, aren't quite leaves, are they? They're pine needles. Yeah, there is a misconception about leaves, 100%. I've had people tell me that it'll change your pH. Now, as... Was it Chris that said it? Yeah, Chris said pine needles will they can have a huge impact on on that and you find um under pine trees nothing tends to grow because your ph goes crazy um <clears throat> but yeah all right how are we going what are people saying Ooh, okay i'm loving these votes how split they are let's get some more votes i want to see 50 votes on this one because i get this question all the time in emails if you guys don't know how to vote if you go to the live chat under the video, it says live chat there, not in the comments, but you go to the live chat. There should be an option there for you to select yes or no in the vote for this. Because I want to see what you guys think. Tim me one from one. Yeah, yeah. You did it. All right. Yo to Emma said, yo to the Smith family. You guys are all watching as a fam. Hey, Emmy. Hey, guys. Um, all right. Emma, we've got, we got 50 votes yet. 44. You guys can do oh, 45. Can I vote? Don't think I can. Well, I'll tell you what, this is pretty split. I love it. 48. Almost at 50. 
This song's not that great, but I'm turning it up anyway until you guys vote. Please hurry up and vote so we can turn this song off. Ah, good on ya. Thank you. Yeah, There's a better song. Alright. The poll is ended. We done. Alright, let's see the answer, hey? Let's see what you guys said first. So, the myth was returning grass clippings will increase. My goodness, I forgot to put a space in between those two. <laughs> returning grass clippings will increase thatch. No, 58%. Yes, 41%. So there's a good little split here. Here's some education for you guys. This is interesting. So, let's flick it up. In the 1960s, it was commonly believed grass clippings were a major component of thatch and removing clippings dramatically slowed thatch development. In 1967, seven years later, they figured it out by the sound of it, Researchers at the University of Rhode Island completed and published a detailed study of thatch showing it was prim primarily composed of lignin-containing tissues, rhizomes, stolons, and stems, as well as living turf grass roots. They concluded that leaves and clippings do not contribute to thatch buildup. There you go. They do not contribute to thatch buildup. Bam. Their findings were confirmed in numerous other studies. Thatch in tendency in zoysia grasses is only increased by 3% from returning clippings. Hey, there's still a 3% increase with zoysia. Which is likely the result of the nutrients added from recycled clippings. There you go. So if your lawn's fed up and there's heaps of nutrients in it, there is a chance you will get a little bit, but very, very tiny chance. Research with Bermuda grass, which is coot grass over here, also confirmed that clippings do not contribute to thatch buildup. Bam. There you go. Learn something new every day. Very cool. So yeah, if you guys are mulching your clippings, you're not going to have issues with thatch. If anything, you're going to be recycling the clippings, getting more out of it because you're going to be recycling nutrients. So keep on mulching. Take that catcher off and mulch away. I mean, don't mow your grass if it goes like it gets really long and then you cut it short. Don't do that because you will cause some problems here and there. But yeah, no, it's fine. Let's pour say <coughs> Mulching is free fertilizer, as I think you stated in an early video. Boom, there you go, man. All over it. You know the cricket's on. I actually don't watch cricket, man. Sorry to disappoint. Will you put a sprinkler system around the fairways? Yeah, man, 100%. So once things dry out, I'm probably going to start irrigation. So it, it looks like we've got a dry week from here through to... Maybe next week. Um, so I might be able to start doing some irrigation next week, which would be so good. I'm keen to get that done. I'm just looking at the weather. It's not loading. Minus three degrees tomorrow morning. And rain. Oh, I'm supposed to be shooting a video. What time's it rain, though? Tell me it's later. Ah, it's at night time. We'll be fine. It's only raining overnight. Even better. The green will be fine. And then we've got 9 degrees for a top on Friday. Disgusting. Oh, we're getting back to cold weather again. Oh, it gets up to 15 next week again. Yeah, there's rain. We've got rain next week. Maybe I'll we'll be doing irrigation. Oh. Um, I mulch in the warmer months and catch in cooler months. It's not a bad idea, Tim. I think that's great. Um, Kiwi Lawny, you ever rolling your green? Do you have a greens roller? So I don't have a greens roller. The last time I used a greens roller, I borrowed one from my brother at the golf course. Um, but I don't have one personally. Um, hoping to get something this season. Looking for a second-hand one. I have been speaking to the guys at True Turf. I'm just waiting to hear back from them because they might be able to source something for me as well. We'll see how we go. But yeah. I'd love to get a roller because then I can start showing you guys differences, like differences in stint meter readings before I roll it. Then after I roll it, I'm going to start doing that with mowing as well, doing a before and after and just showing you guys the difference. Even if I do some, do a stint meter reading before I top dress and after I top dress and just show you guys the differences there as well. Because all those things do have an impact on your green speeds. How old were you when you got into lawn care? <laughs> when I became an apprentice green keeper, to be honest, man. 
So believe it or not, when I was younger, mowing grass was not my cup of tea. I just never really got into it. I think when I was growing up, I mowed the lawn twice. Um, and then when we, Emma and I rented our first house, which was just in a little unit in town, a two bedroom unit. And we had a tiny backyard. It would have been like 50 square meters. And I used to use a whippersnipper from Aldi to whippersnip the yard. And I broke that whippersnipper. Um, and so I bought a mower with my tools for trade apprenticeship money. And then we moved out of there. This is while I was an apprentice at the golf course as well. I just, I don't know. And then it's only once I really, really got into grass, probably in about my third year of my apprenticeship where I really started to learn more and understand how like scientific it can get, like how, just how much there is to know about grass. Like I'm still learning all the time and I love it. I really, really love it. And as soon as I started like growing, we go, we grew a golf green in the golf course. For, like we built one and grew it. I loved it. Then I seeded my lawn at home, got me more into it. And then I just started researching, buying books, looking up as much stuff as I can. And I still do that. I still look at books and still look at info. I just love learning about grass. It's so cool. Sounds weird. Such a dad thing. Although you're not a dad though, are you, Ben? I think, did you say you were 14 from memory? Winter grass, can this be sprayed before it starts to take hold? So I would recommend putting down a pre-emergent if you can, man. Um, something like Barricade or Spartan would be my go-to. If you've got bent grass, don't be putting pre-emergent in on bent grass. But yeah, pre-emergent would be the way to do it normally. <clears throat> and I like to do it at the start of autumn just to protect yourself. And also towards the end of August. So we're looking at only a couple of weeks away. Should we do one more? If you guys got any questions, if you've got any other questions, flick them in there now. I'm going to just do a little run of question answering right now. And then we might do one more myth just for the fun of it. But yeah, get some questions in there now and we'll wrap the stream up soonish. Here we go, we've got a question. Mitch. Best way to repair posty bike tire tracks in winter? Hard one, man, because you can't really top dress it. What I used to do when I used to have the same issue in my ryegrass in town is I actually used to get a pitchfork, pry it underneath the low spot, and actually lift it up. So just pry it up with some forks. That's really like a pitchfork. That's really the only thing you can do this time of year, to be honest, mate. Um... And just make sure you go nice and deep as well, not too shallow. Otherwise, you'll start to tear the roots a little bit and cause some problems with that. But that's what I'll probably recommend doing. All right. Um, Mitch. Um, hey, mate, I live in Darwin. What's the best shade grass? If you're in Darwin, man, um, what's that one that Brenton from the Aussie Lawn always harps on about? Durban grass. I don't know if you can get it there, man, but Durban grass is really, really good in shade. Um, Zoysia can be good in shade. I'm not sure how that goes in Darwin, though. Actually, it should. It would probably go pretty well in Darwin. They use it over in Dubai quite a, bl a bit, um, Zoysia. But you have, have a look into some buffalo as well, or even some Durban grass as well. Do you guys, do you guys use buffalo much actually up in, in Darwin? Hold up. Or is it the climate too crazy? Yeah, no, you can get you can get buffalo up there. You can get some Sir Walter. You can. Right. <coughs> Best advice for living my lawn in the upcoming Reno. Um, so if it was me, man, I'd highly recommend you do core aeration first. Um, and if I was going to be leveling it, I'd recommend using some sand just because it's not going to break down down over time. Not going to have any weed seeds in it. Help a little bit with your drainage as well. Um, and grass grows very easily through sand as well because it is quite loose and it's not going to like cake on top of there as well. Now you've got to make sure the type of sand you get is either going to be a 90-20, so 90% sand, 10% soil or organics, or an 
or a 7030. If you can get some USGA sand, even better. Really, really good for top dressing. Sometimes just the wash pit sand will be fine. The only thing I'd recommend with the wash pit sand is make sure there's not too many fines in it. So that it, that because that can start to cake up and be like clay. Um, or make sure there's not too many coarse bits in there as well. It's not going to retain any moisture. So you just got to make sure you find a good mix of sand. What do you think about keeping printer or ryegrass at high heights? Man, you can definitely have it at two inches. It's fine. Like 50 mil is fine with printer or ryegrass. <coughs> All right. What can I do to stop dog wee spots? Hard one. Um, I'd recommend not using high nitrogen fertilizers. So maybe sticking to some liquids would be the best way to go. Stay away from any granular fertilizer. Using liquids with lower inputs of nitrogen. So like a balanced NPK. So my lawn tips mix that I sell actually does have a lower input of nitrogen. So if you still want to fertilize your lawn, look at something like that because you're going to get more P and K out of it and be fed through your microbes and some organics that are in there as well. There's a little bit of nitrogen, but not a ton. Um, also, if you know where they're going to the toilet, maybe hand watering that spot whenever you know, like maybe in the afternoon after they've done it, like diluting it. Um, and apart from that, there's not really much. I heard people talking about dog rocks. I don't, like some people say it works, some people say it doesn't. So it's, just, it's like some sort of a rock you put in their water. I don't know if it has any impact on their actual gut health. So I wouldn't recommend it. Um, but yeah. That's all I've really got advice-wise for that. I cut my ryegrass every day. Am I nuts? No, bro. Respect. Love it. Um, Kevin Booth, where's your allegiance lie for the Women's FIFA World Cup? Australia and New Zealand. Mate, the Aussies all the way. I am a Kiwi, but I've lived in Australia for pretty much all my life, so it'd be a bit weird if I went for the Kiwis. Um, Daniel Reynolds, one of my old customers would give a case of beer once a month month to a postman to walk his letters to the letterbox and no post bike on the lawn. Yeah, well, that's a solution. <laughs> um, where are more questions? We've got some flying through. Um, am I wasting my money turning my Scotty into groomer? I don't think so, man. I think that's a great idea. Um, I would love to get a nice groomer that's just a sole mower that only does grooming. Because I do have the Protea here, which to be honest, I might actually use the Protea next season just for grooming on the green because I've got other mowers now. So, yeah, I don't think it's a waste, man, especially if you've got another mower to cut with. Why not? Do it. How can you get Kaikyu out of a buffalo lawn? Oh, that's a hard one. Or control it as buffalo looks okay. Um, If it was me, man, I'm just trying to remember... If there's a, I'm pretty sure there's not a selective for that, man. Um, it's hard because they're similar as well. Normally, I'd say if it was cooch and buffalo, you just mow a little bit taller, and the and the cooch can't quite take over as much. But kaiki will grow up just like the buffalo as well. Um, I don't really have an answer for that one. Sorry, mate. It's a tough one. I mean, you could paint it with some glyphosate, but I mean that's such a fiddly process. Such a fiddly process. Um, if anyone's got any advice on how they've done that, flick it down in the comments for me. But I don't really, really have an answer for you. Sorry, mate. Any help with the cock shapers? Uh, I don't have much experience with them. Sorry, man. You should do a full mower tour and whipper snipper. Yeah, I haven't done that for a while. We could do an old equipment tour one time. Could do a live stream of even doing that. Hi from South Africa. Any human? Hey man, how you going? Any humane tips for dealing with moles? I don't. Sorry, man. We don't get moles over here, so I don't really have much advice um, with moles. I think I spoke about it earlier in the live stream. I think the lawn care nut Alan Hain did some stuff with them. I think he it wasn't humane, so it's probably not the answer you're looking for. Full shed tour. You might do that. I need to clean the shed again, actually. I feel like I clean that every two months at the moment. Zoysia or Tiff Tough in New South Wales? Depends what you want, man. They both got serve their own purposes. Um, personally, I haven't had much to do with Zoysia, so I can't tell you yet. Um, 
but I do love cooch grass just gen in general. Um, I'd probably go tiff tough, but then it depends if you're doing like shift work and you can't get to mowing all the time. Zoysia is going to be the go. Tiff tough is quite aggressive and grows quite a lot, so you've got to keep on top of your mowing. Don't need to put as many fertilizer inputs into it, but zoysia is also the same. You don't need to put as much fertilizer into that either. Um, but if you're really keen on like working a lot on your lawn, mowing quite regularly, using plant growth regulators, um, tiff tough, maybe you go too, and it will repair so much quicker than zoysia will too. How do you get rid of carpet grass out of a buffalo lawn? Is it similar to the Kaiki question? Yeah, I don't have much um, much advice with that as well, to be honest, mate. Sorry. You got some tough ones for me tonight. If anyone knows any answers to that question as well, that is turf registered as well. Don't be something that's off-label. Um, flick in the comments. Had a tiny bit of cooch in my buffalo about a year ago. Key was to catch it early, dig out the entire section out. The buff crept back over the bare area the next few months. Yeah, exactly. If you catch it early, dig it out or paint it. What car do you drive? Please answer. I just got a Ford Ranger. That's what I got, bro. What's up, Ben? Loving the vids. I want to see Schnitty on cam. I think Schnitzel's outside at the moment. Sorry. Uh, I have Cooch Lawn out the front and Buffalo at the back, and there is some spreading out the front. Some of the cooch spreading in the buff. So as Scott was saying, you can pick it out if you only got little bits here and there. And then top just on top of that and allow the buffalo to creep in. Um, or cut a little bit taller and you will choke the cooch out a little bit. It will still creep in there and get in there. But yeah, that's the way you sort of got to... Um, <clears throat> uh, what's the word? Yeah, you got to try to do as much as you can to like just choke it out that way. But there's not really any herbicides you're going to be able to use. Sorry, man. Um, you can find the Airbnb on the Airbnb website. Um, it's just, it's called Olaya. So, O, you can go on Instagram too. Um, Emma's, so that's the, how you spell it. Olaya is what the Airbnb is called. Olaya Bed and Bricky. Olaya Bed, oh my goodness. And Bricky, did I spell it right, Emma? Too bad if I didn't. Yeah, so that's open now, just in case you guys didn't know. Um, yeah, but you can find it on Airbnb. And Emma's also created an Instagram for it as well. I mean the buffalo creeping in the cooch lawn. Oh, if you've got buffalo going in the cooch, man, you could use some diacamba M, and that will smash the buffalo, and the cooch won't be worried at all. So I'll show you what the product is, just so you know what I'm talking about. Right, you ready? You ready, Freddy? Bada beam, bada boom. So, herbicides. Dicamba M. So you can use this on your cooch grass. This Dicamba M that's just here. And it will hurt the buffalo, but it won't hurt the cooch grass. Do you get to play the green with the Airbnb? Yes, you do, Joe. 100% you do. Let me know if you're coming too. If you do book it. Let me know. Alright, we'll wrap it up in a couple of minutes. Um, we may let's just do one more one more myth. Oh yeah, that's cool. Oh well, that that's a very big answer there. There you go, this is a cool this is a cool myth. I like this one. Let's add this one in, you ready? The pole is up. Answer away. Paul, do you ever check back at your old house or it doesn't? Or is that a don't look back? <laughs> I've driven back a few times. It doesn't look great. So, you know, it doesn't hurt me. Like, it honestly doesn't worry me that the grass isn't being looked after because some people love it. It's their passion. Some people don't. It's just the way it is. It's just a hobby. Um, yeah, like, it doesn't worry me that it's dead. Well, pretty much decimated, but yeah, I have gone back a few times just to have a sneaky little look. Um, 
What can you use to stop sour sobs in lawns? So I'm pretty sure sour sobs is oxalis. I think that's what you guys call it in South Australia for memories. So same thing. Depends on what your grass type is. Um, if you got cooch, um, that dicamba M is going to be fine. For If you want to be safe, a, a herbicide can be safe for pretty much all grass types. Look at something like bow and arrow. So this is our... Here we go. Bow and arrow just here. Which will get rid of your exhaust for you. Bada beam, bada boom. That's it, just there. Right. We're going to do... You hear you guys going with that myth. Turf performs better the more it is irrigated. <coughs> How are we looking? This one's a little bit more one-sided. to wrap up the oh, we've got 50 votes on it beautiful well, I'll wrap it up then all right so we're gonna end the poll let's have a look at these results right turf performs better the more it is irrigated we got 60% saying no and 40% saying yes so let's have a look at the answer on this website for you guys. Alright. More fine turf is damaged in Arkansas each year from homeowners overwatering than underwatering. True fact. During most summers, not June to September here, we're looking at December to February, your lawn will need supplemental water. Supplemental? Watering in addition to rainfall to maintain colour and density. <coughs> Water only is needed when the lawn is showing signs of water stress. So you don't water all the time. You don't water daily because you can start to have problems with your roots starting to shrink. Um, diseases in your lawn. It's just going to cause more issues than not. So as I've talked about this before, your lawn goes a little bit blue when it's getting a little bit thirsty. So it says here, which include a bluish gray to brown color of the grass or you will see some footprints in there it's a really really good sign that your lawn is starting to dry out so there should be water in the early in the morning as needed once per week is normally enough in the summer months this is if you've got warm season grass if you've got cool season grass probably looking at two to three times and it also depends on where you live and your soil type so You've got to realize that as well. I spoke this about this a little bit earlier in the video, but obviously sandy soils are going to require a little bit more water than, say, your clay. Cool. Awesome. Well, that's going to be it for those. So we're going to wrap it up in two minutes. I'll go through the rest of what's written on here, and then we're going to wrap it up. All right, equipment tour. We will eventually. Have you got any quotes for the masters yet on the golf green <laughs> what no I don't quite know what you mean but no we start doing lives more often I plan to I've been wanting to do lives for ages I just have I honestly just I've been lazy that's the honest truth I just haven't done it that's just the honest truth Jeez, bro I appreciate you saying it looks the golf green's looking mint I'm loving it loving the colours at the moment like it almost feels like spring with how well it's growing at the moment and just the color in it considering i haven't put any fur out for be pretty much a month now who's my tip for the open this weekend um i'd love to see cameron smith get a win just because he's a fellow grass lover and he seems to be on a good streak um yeah that's that's just who i'm going for Have you thought about doing a lawn plan for Cooch Greens? Would definitely be keen if so. Yeah, I'm thinking about it, man. I'm thinking about doing a bent grass one as well. Um, there's another one I'm thinking of doing as well, which I haven't done yet. Oh, I'm actually going to do a dedicated Tiff Tough plan as well because I've had a little bit of feedback, which is honestly true. There's a little bit too much nitrogen in the plans 
at the moment, the couch grass plans, depending on where you live, if you're in a bit of a cooler climate, the extra nitrogen doesn't matter, but if you're in somewhere like Queensland or even Sydney, somewhere a bit warmer than where I am, a little bit of extra nitrogen just makes it grow too crazy and it's hard to keep up with it unless you're using plant growth regulators and you're on top of it all the time. It just depends on what inputs you're putting in and how you're looking after it. So I'm going to make a dedicated Tiff Tough one as well. Jay from Bathurst, awesome man, not far from me. Thanks for popping in, mate. You should make a live stream mowing the golf green. Yeah, I'm considering it. How do you maintain ryegrass mixed with Kentucky bluegrass in the summertime? Make sure you keep the water up to it, man. Regular mowing, maybe mow a little bit higher. And use wetting agents as well. Um, soil test service is not up and running, sorry, yet, um, Peter. I'm still trying to figure out the logistics of that. Because I'm try I want to make it as automated as I can. Just because I'm going to be starting to shoot a lot more videos once the season kicks up. Um, and it just gets away from me too much with the soil test. And I don't get to back to people quick enough. So I'm just trying to figure out the best way to automate it. While still giving advice and offering advice into what to amend in your soil as well. So that's the only reason I haven't really jumped ahead and started to do it. Is because I know as soon as I take it on I probably won't be able to keep up with it. Um, anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Appreciate you guys. Thanks for tuning in. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Plan to do one next week or the following week. We'll see how things go. Um, but yeah, I definitely want to do these more regularly. Hopefully you guys get something out of it and enjoy it. And yeah, I'll see you guys in Saturday's video, which is... It's going to be a good one. I've got lots of stuff going on in it. So I'm excited for you guys to see it. Anyway, have a good one, guys. Enjoy your night. I'll talk to you guys very soon. Bye.